So on the water a little bit earlier this morning, beautiful day so far, nice water levels going from Syracuse to Kendall, Kansas. Well, starting in 1976, uh, as a 22-year-old, I took a bicentennial message from the mayor of Dodge City, the mayor of New Orleans. So I'd never been down south before, never been by myself that long before, never been on the river that long before. And those six weeks was like a life-changing experience for me. And I decided at the end of that uh, trip to go ahead and do the entire river if I ever had a chance to go ahead and do it. So part of the reasons for me to do it is to fulfill that promise to myself that if I had the opportunity, I would go ahead and actually follow a drop of water from the Continental Divide in Colorado all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. So that's what I'm doing there. That's one reason. Second reason, I think, is to uh, go ahead and, and sort of telling my family I've been doing it, either put up or shut up. That's the second reason. Third reason, I think, is to say that people at my age still can have adventures. Uh, so those are probably the, the three biggest reasons for me doing this. But the disappointment is you know, that, that the uh, river is going to stop, almost literally, I think, between here and Garden City. We've got to find out where that is. And so I plan to walk it. Uh, where I can. I'm not anxious to go and walk it in mud or those kind of things, uh, but if it's a dry stream bed, I'll probably walk part of it. If I can get, obtain an ATV, probably use an ATV to explore it as well. But I just don't want to pass over it and not try to understand uh, the riverbed itself and the communities that surround the riverbeds because the Arkansas River was a formidable river in Kansas uh, for thousands of years. Uh, and part of the story is that during my lifetime, I've seen a de deg degradation of the Arkansas River uh, by virtue of many different reasons, certainly irrigation being one of those. Uh, so I just don't want to bypass it. I want to understand the communities where the river went through and learn more about the communities and, and the people that, uh, that live along it. Uh, so it's really important in my viewpoint before you take on these trips to know exactly where you're going, understand the environment you're in so you know where the hazards are. Uh, and also important for eastern Colorado is to go and get permission from landowners before you go ahead and provide any access. Uh, it is impolite, I think, and rude to go ahead and cross somebody's property without letting them know you're going to be there. So all that kind of stuff has to be taken into consideration before I do the next day's travel. There isn't much I don't like about the river. I think the river is beautiful. Uh, the tamarack, I understand, people kind of chastise it for being a water-loving plant, but I tell you, it provides a great deal of foliage and vegetation and cover for the wildlife, which is prolific here. The number and variety of species of waterfowl and regular fowl is astounding to me, uh, as well as the number of deer. Uh, it's been really a joy to go and see all that, that activity. Uh, so it, it is beautiful. It's akin to some rivers that I do down in Missouri, although you know it's not as prolific in terms of uh, large banks, obviously, given it's a prairie river, but it is gorgeous. And the sun rises and sun sets, and the way the sun comes to the trees, uh, it is a very beautiful river. Oh, absolutely. The swallows are thousands of swallows underneath every bridge, and they come out and greet you when you get to that, that location, uh, as well as the people on the river as well, the occasional person that will be fishing. Uh, everybody I've met the re river, bar none, has been wonderful to go ahead and be with, and, and have been very polite and very uh, a good joy to be with. Irrespective of their age, uh, their color, their background, economic factors, people like the river, they're good people.